What's going on everyone, Brando here. We have to talk about something that I have not discussed on this channel in a very long time, and that is going to be the stock market. A lot of the indexes are either in a correction or a bear market at this point, falling either 10 or 20%. Wall Street has sold off and retail traders are nowhere to be found. So I wanna give some confidence back to the retail traders that we still exist. Let me know in the comments if you are still buying stocks or doing anything to keep yourself invested to try and fight off inflation and raising rates and everything else. That'll be cool to see anyone else down there who's still investing in this crazy market. But now let's show my losses, how much money I've been losing, and why I'm gonna start throwing more money in the stock market. Since November, 2021, pretty much the entire stock market has dropped except for a couple outliers of like the energy sector and maybe you were selling put options on Netflix or you shorted the stock or something. You might've made a lot of money that way. But for the majority of people, you've probably lost money and that sucks, but it's okay if you still hold on to your assets and believe in the company's long-term and are a long-term investor. Even if you don't individually pick stocks, this is still probably affecting you because if you check your IRA balance or your 401k balance, you're gonna see that's most likely down unless you were 100% in something like the energy sector, which is up currently, that's very risky. Don't, I would not say to do that. But you're most likely down and let's show just literally how bad I'm down. And I'm not doing screenshots, I'm actually showing you my Fidelity account where I, if I just kept cash in this account recently, I would have $32,000. I actually have about $26,000 because of how far down my investments have gone. And you can see it's that November 2021 timeframe. Stocks, especially for what I invest in in this account, this is my main brokerage account where I'm buying for growth. I'm buying a couple dividend stocks. This is where I'm, I'm not calling it fun money, but this is my heavy investing account that's not retirement. So this is pretty much the bread and butter. If we look at how I've done in this account recently, it sucks. I'm down 23%. That sucks. Over time though, and this is what I really want to stress to everyone who's new in the stock market. I'm considered new, but I have been doing this for a couple years and you'll see that in a second. My actual return is pretty much in line with the S&P 500, but that's because of how far down we are. So if anyone has Fidelity, this is the performance tab. It is very, very cool. It goes into a lot of your risk and allocation and different things like that. But right here is what I want to stress. I have done pretty well, and I'm not doing this to brag or anything like that, but in stock picking, if you believe in your company's long-term and they become more profitable over time, or if you're going for dividends or growth stock, like it all depends on what you're investing in, but you will probably do pretty well if you stick to it. If you do short-term trades and things like that, I can't help you there. But in the long term, when you buy solid companies at cheaper valuations, especially like how they are now, you will probably do fairly well. If we look at this, when I started in 2016, I started pretty well. Look at 2016 to 2017. That I could probably never replicate again because we were also in a very high bull run. But the big thing from this is look at 2021. We ended the year down. And also 2018, because 2018 was one of the years I added to stocks. Incredibly heavy. However, that was only in the last half of the year, specifically the last like month or two, because in 2018, near the end of the year, stocks just dropped. It was a crash. Well, I, I don't remember if it was a crash or correction percentage wise, but there were essentially three times so far where I have loaded a lot of money into this account at all at once. In that crash correction of 2018, in March, April of 2020, right when the pandemic hit, stocks literally hit circuit breakers, everything was coming to a halt. There I flooded a lot of money in and look at how 2020 turned out. That was a 50% return literally from that year, that was just incredible. And 2021, I added a little bit here and there, just dollar cost averaging, as everyone says you should do, and you should for your indexes, retirement, and if you're in the stocks as I am, but it went bad. And now we're really getting to a bad spot in the market for highs and being happy when you look at your account, but that is a great time to actually invest. And this is one of the things that I use, not to time the market or something along like that, 
but the fear and greed index is a great way of figuring out whether it is a buying market in stocks or a selling market in stocks. There are a lot of reasons why the market is fearful right now. Russia, Ukraine, Fed interest hikes, inflation is here. It, it's just a really bad economic time to be an investor, but that's also the same point and reason why it is the best time to be an investor right now is because everyone, at least overall, is fearful. The VIX is really what I have been using for the past several years. So that is actually a calculation in here somewhere. Which one's the VIX? The VIX right now, very high. And that's why this metric here of the fear and greed index is fearful. A lot of these are extreme fear, fear, extreme fear, greed, which means greed is actually on the other side, but fear and extreme fear. This one is sort of getting to what I mentioned earlier. The S&P 500 is way below its moving average. So I'm not a technical trader or anything like that, but the moving average basically looks at the past 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 250 days, something along those lines, and tracks what that number was. When it's below that number, that's a fearful indication that this index, the S&P 500, is pretty low compared to what it used to be, which is a sign of fear. It's very rare that we get points of fear and extreme fear in the market. The VIX, which is, like I said, how I used to track this, does not get super high very often. So these are very good times to dollar cost average into your Roth IRA. If you have an ETF, you invest in there or individual stocks if you find them where they're extremely undervalued. I'll go to my own watch list, which I keep on Yahoo Finance. This is sorted by market cap. And except for a few outliers like Target, BJ's, and those are really the only two that are fairly at least halfway above their 52-week high range. Everything else is in the toilet. It, it's just really bad. A lot of these companies are growth companies and things that I have invested in for years and years and years to come. Some of them like JPM, Chase, that's just a company that I use. I love them. I think they're an incredible bank. I don't usually like banks that much, but this one is good and they pay a nice dividend. Now, out of all the companies that I currently own, the way that I tend to look at this and the way that stocks tend to sell off is the small market cap. So these little tiny companies down here, these, the second the market is fearful, pff, done. Those will drop 20, 30%. Your middle size companies, a couple billion dollars. So this handful here, these will sell off when the small caps have already sold off and they're basically the next target. The large caps are the company's billions and billions of dollars. When these start selling off, this is a not a good sign that we're nearing the bottom, but essentially that's when you know the stock market is getting closer to a bottom. It could be the second the large caps sell off from their highs and now they're selling, 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 and then they get down here. That could be the end of the bottom and it goes right back up. That's somewhat what happened in March 2020, a bit with pandemic. But what could also happen is the big tech stocks, the Amazons, the Apples, and I want to touch on Apple in a second, but those could be super high. Then they start to sell off and then they keep selling off. And then maybe in this case, the energy stocks sell off and then any of the safe dividend stocks sell off. That's that's just a part of a bull market. Everything can just keep selling down and you can't time the bottom. But the large caps can be an indicator of when things are getting extremely valuable and become better deals. In this case, Facebook is one of them. So if we look at Facebook, they absolutely crushed earnings, which I'm kind of sad about because I just bought more Facebook this week. I think it was yesterday. I'll throw it up here. It was only two shares, but my cost basis on Facebook in Fidelity in that account I showed you in the beginning is I think $233 or somewhere around there. Facebook under 200 to me by where I value this company is an absolute steal. So when it dropped, I think I bought at 180, something around there, that was just a test of, to me saying, I'm doing exactly what I said. I dollar cost average because I don't like playing around with earnings. I loved Facebook back then when I paid $230 a share. It dropped from its highs 
and I had a couple hundred dollars in my account, I said, all right, Facebook at 187. I'm going to dollar cost average here because I believe in this company long term. When you look at everything that they have, Facebook, Instagram, also feel free to follow me on there. If you didn't know, my Facebook page has like 16,000 followers. It's pretty cool actually. But it's their business model, whatever, I'm not even valuing metaverse and everything because I can't understand that. But what they currently have is so much more valuable than what they're rated at as a $470 billion company. That was a steal to me. And they crushed it and they're over 200. So I have to decide if I'm going to invest more in this one. One of the big ones that is on my watch list and everyone's watch list, especially for tomorrow, is going to be Apple because Apple reports earnings tomorrow and For those that don't remember or for those that are a bit questioning the stock market, and like I said, these big companies really hold it up, Apple market cap wise is massive and it is in the S&P 500. It's in pretty much any retirement account or not retirement. It's not in every retirement account, but it's in so many indexes and mutual funds because of just this company, how much they're worth makes up such a large percentage of these ETF pies and all this other stuff. But if this one falls, that will bring down everything. This will bring down the S&P 500. This will also bring down the semiconductor space, which has already been shot down pretty hard. And it just will bring down probably all the other tech stocks. So like I was saying, the small cap, the mid cap, and the large cap, Apple is like super mega large cap. So if Apple falls, everything underneath it is falling down too. So I will be heavily investing the spare cash, which is a few thousand dollars in that account that I've been talking about, my main brokerage account. I will be heavily investing all of that money. I will try and find any extra dollar I can that I can throw into stocks if Apple falls because that will bring the rest of the market down. If you want to see a video on the stocks that I actually buy, I already mentioned I bought the two shares of Facebook, but that went up. But If you do want to see me buy that three grand worth of stocks and which ones I'm picking, let me know in the comments and I might just record that for you all and give my thought basis and everything else there. Now, there is just one other piece of clarification we have to add to buying stocks or buying ETFs or buying when the market's going down is understand and make sure that this is money that you do not need in two months to pay your mortgage or your car payment or your insurance or a bill or something along those lines. This is money that is outside of your emergency fund. It is outside of your checking account and everything else. So I already have the money in my brokerage account that I'm ready to invest. It's about three grand. It was before the Facebook shares, but if that three grand turns into 2,200 in the short term, I'm okay with that. I am comfortable with that because of that volatility. Now, if you still want to invest to try to keep up with inflation and everything else, you should check out this video up here that actually goes into I-bonds, how those are a guaranteed investment. It was a pretty cool video that I posted recently, so definitely check that one out if you haven't already. And until the next video, please keep trying to be smart with your money out there.